You're watching Escape Adulthood Live, your number one source for long-lasting, fast-acting, physician-approved adultitis relief. On this week's show, we are talking about ginormous pumpkins, chicken nuggets in space, and reasons to be excited about the future. Greetings and salutations, or should we say aloha? Aloha. Thank you for shenanigating with us. I see so many awesome folks already saying hello and aloha as well. And uh, we've cool. got a big Arizona contingent tonight. Yes, we do. The and, Tracys, um, Gretchen. We've got Michigan represented. Barb's Lobar. also got some zucchini bread in the oven, Barb, which I can put smell it through, right put now. Put it through the camera somehow to us. <laughs> yeah, we got. We do have a little bit of a Hawaii theme tonight, and yes. we'll uh, we'll let you know why in a little bit. But um, we also have a little friend tonight. Yes, you guys we mentioned this. I think we mentioned it last week, the week before, that we're going to be watching Edward Scissorhands yes. with our children, the Tim Burton classic. Johnny Depp. Yes, we've been kind of on a Tim Burton fan uh, kick this October, as yes, we you might, you know, it's not crazy to do that this time of year. But the kids, it was a big hit, I have to say. We have not tuned in to Edward Scissorhands in a few decades. It's worth, though, it's worth it. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Yes, it's classic Tim Burton, just the creativity and the... Uh, and Johnny Depp this, looks so the young. Suburb and, and, that the the neighborhood oh gosh, is so, so clever and creative. Yes, and, the pastel colors. But um, we asked the kids after, you know, what were your favorite parts? And I think they were really big into when Edward cut all the bushes into amazing shapes, yes. you know, and then the the haircuts was a big Given deal. Giving the ladies in the neighborhood right. haircuts, so that was pretty good. Yeah. And the dogs, he he did do the dogs as well. So. And um, the waterbed. They they had oh, never yes. seen a waterbed no before. About water beds. So when he uh, punctured the waterbed, we had a, my parents had a waterbed growing up. So I, they were like, "What? What? Is, like the concept of water in a bed? Like, I'm like are waterbeds still around? Do people still maintain waterbeds?" That's a good question. We had a waterbed. Store Does that is anyone watching have a waterbed? That do they? Is that? I don't know if that's a thing anymore. I don't either. But, uh, where would you get it? Like, where would you purchase the waterbed it? store? Waterbeds are us. That's where you get that. <laughs> Uh, but fun fact, I don't know if you knew this or not, uh, Tom Cruise oh, was yes. who Tim Burton wanted in the role. Mm -hmm. Tom Hanks turned down the role of Edward Scissorhands. Like, can you imagine Tom, Tom Hanks as Edward Scissorhands? Woody? And, the uh, kids are like, Woody from Toy Story? Gary Oldman was also in the mix, uh, who Gary? is, uh, Sirius Black from oh, Harry Potter yes. and, okay. uh, He's been in a ton of movies. Yeah, he was that's true, Commissioner yeah. Gordon and some of the Batman movies. But yeah, I had to go back to like, what did he look like when he was a teen heartthrob? Was he a teen? Because he, I just imagined him like with the, you know, scruffy like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, no. Was, but a, a he did have a little later. bit of a dark and brooding look to him back in yeah. the back yeah, in the, the day. Yeah, the picture so. was like, oh yeah, I could see him as Edward. But I mean, who could be? Um, what's his face? Johnny. Johnny. Johnny Who Depp, can beat yeah. Johnny on that role? It was amazing. And Brian Colgan has never seen it. <sighs> That's crazy. Rachel said that uh, her parents had a, I'm assuming, waterbed. <laughs> or an Edward <laughs> Could be anything. Hands. Could be we had an Edward Scissorhands <laughs> growing up. Uh, Kathy Rose said she used to have a waterbed. Yeah, it, they were very popular. Uh, like yeah. the town I grew up in had 20,000 people, and we had a waterbed store in the town. Like in the town, we, downtown, there's a waterbed and store. And that's not a big town either. No. It just goes to so tell you. It was uh, a big deal at a certain period. Christy Ward says, my parents still have theirs. I had one until I got married. So those of you, uh, obviously Kathy had one. My favorite part of growing up with a waterbed in our home was burping the bed. Burping the bed. We literally okay. burped the bed. Is that still a thing? Chris, or Kathy, do you still have to burp the bed? Do you know what that is? You have to get all the uh, air bubbles out. Get the out. air out, yeah. But it was fun. Did it create, like, did Air Gurgles. bubbles just go in it, like even if, or is that like when you first filled it? I think every so often we had to burp it. My they had a stick, like a broomstick, that they would like push all the air to the hole, and things would pop up, and these little fuzzy things would come out, or whatever they were. Styrofoam. We we thought it was all the rage. So. Did you say styrofoam? Styrofoam. Okay. So, <laughs> did you just say that because I yeah, said? Yeah, of course. Okay. Just 
just, I'm just curious. Just curious. You are very uh, auditorily gifted. Let me tell well, you. You know, you know. Uh, Tracy says I put my mattress in a waterbed ah, frame. Interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah, they had some cool frames. And They're Barb says good. first big item I bought for myself with my hard-earned teenage money. <laughs> Classic. Oh, that would have been so exciting. Uh, I, you know that moment. Mine was a CD player. That was the first thing I bought player. myself. I, yeah, I think a stereo, a stereo and a bike. Okay, it was my my summer money. First but, um, well, tonight okay. we've uh, we got a lot of good things planned. Uh, we thank you for being here. We encourage you to share this with yes. others to let them know about the show. But let's get on to um, first. Let me uh, say a real quick happy birthday to our Wonder and Whimsy Society members tomorrow. Gina Glover and Sarah Mertz, happy birthday! Your birthdays obviously are tomorrow, and enjoy. And then on Saturday we have Dorothy Beck. Who's celebrating her birthday and on Sunday we have Debbie Green. So hope you guys have a really awesome birthday. There you go. Well, I think we need to get to some news. Let's How about that? All right, folks. Well, we've got some interesting news on the adultitis free news front. Uh, this first one is about a life saving teacher. Uh, this here is Julia Coke. Cook. It's one of those weird names. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Julia Cook. We'll go with that. Uh, she actually was giving virtual lessons and saved the life of a student's grandmother. What? So add that to your list of things teachers do. <laughs> While they're doing As virtual if they're not school, already heroes. saving <laughs> lives. Boom, mic drop. Okay, right? <laughs> story here. First grade teacher in Michigan is being recognized for her efforts that helped save the life of one of her students' grandmothers. Hmm. Julia was teaching her class at Edgewood Elementary School when she received a call from a grandparent who was having technical problems with her granddaughter's computer. But Cook noticed a more serious problem, the slurring in the woman's Aww. speech. It was clear that there was something very wrong. Her words were so jumbled and I couldn't understand what she was trying to say, Cook said. She didn't sound like herself. Hmm. Cook quickly alerted the uh, school principal who called 911. Phillips was having a stroke and while she remains hospitalized, hmm. she is expected to survive. Wow. I knew the symptoms of a stroke because I lost my father from a stroke. So I told her, hold on and immediately got her help. Wow. While she's still at the hospital, Philip said she's slowly recovering. Thank you for saving my life, Philip said. If it weren't for them getting me the help I needed, I would just not, I would, would have just not been here. Wow. So, I have goosebumps. There we go. That's pretty Aww, cool. Oh, that is amazing. Score one for virtual schooling. <sighs> yes. Well, that, uh, <laughs> one versus how many million? <laughs> one at a time. One at a time. <laughs> Made a difference to that one. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool story of being amazing. able to be aware of that. And it comes, Aww. you know, hits a little bit close to home because my, my dad recently had a stroke. Uh, mm -hmm. He's doing well. So uh, we were very fortunate with that. But uh, yeah, it's interesting how that, that works. Stuff, but, right? Yeah. So, you know, as much as there's a lot of difficult things, again, that, that probably wouldn't have happened had virtual schooling not been a thing. Right. So... It's just weird. It's a weird year, you guys, and weird times. But um, I believe that uh, the man upstairs uses these weird things for good um, in more times than we even realize. Yep. So. Sure. All right. Uh, moving on. Another story. This is about pumpkins. Take a look at that. Oh. We've got a monster pumpkin. This pumpkin weighed 2,350 pounds. <laughs> This crowned the largest grown in North America. Oh my god. A gosh. Minnesota grower, Travis Geinger. Again, we got his some names. Minnesotans in the comments tonight. He drove his gigantic <laughs> drove his how, gigantic yeah, gourd all the way to California. And he captured first prize at the world championship pumpkin way off with a whopping beauty weighing over two hundred 300 pounds. Two thousand three hundred pounds. What? Um, so he is actually a horticulture teacher. At the Anoka Technical College, he won the grand prize, which paid seven dollars for every pound. Whoa, whoa! Do the math, Did you? carry the one. <laughs> That's sixteen thousand four hundred and fifty dollars that he won. Feels like so, it should be more. <laughs> here's here's this. There's two things that I love about this story. Here's my first favorite one: seeds from a giant pumpkin are the size of a peach pit. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Like everything's bigger. Everything's <laughs> bigger. Uh, and after being... Oh, did we, <laughs> we both do it? Yeah, baby. Yeah. Canceled each other out. Uh, after being planted in April, giant pumpkins can gain as much as 50 pounds a day. Oh, that sounds like wow. corona. That sounds like lockdown. That's like the third trimester for all my pregnancies. That's that's <laughs> lockdown weight right there. Uh, Geinger has been growing pumpkins in his backyard for 20 years. Oh, the pumpkin was a mere 274 pounds shy of smashing the world record of 2,624 pounds set in 2016 at the giant pumpkin european so championship in germany if it would just been five days later would it would have been okay <laughs> could have been right <laughs> did i do the math like six days later oh man so here's here's the other part of the story that i love is uh, a single crack in the pumpkin during the cross-country drive would have disqualified no. him from the contest but geinger fitted the trailer with a pallet tarps and soil to keep tiger king Yes, it has a name, Tiger, Tiger King, King of from bouncing around, and he watered it every time they stopped for gas. He watered it. Watered it? Watered it. it was still on a vine? Like, <laughs> it, was, it, was the world, it was also the world's longest vine, <laughs> as it was still in Minnesota. Yeah, that's that happened. Okay, I have a lot of questions and comments. Where do you even What do you want to know? Then? What do you guys think of this? Oh my gosh. Like, Jody says, roast me some of those seeds. <laughs> Yeah, like that's a meal. That's a meal, yeah, that's a meal. Ridiculous that's a legit meal. Oh my gosh, what else? Are we yeah, Catherine say? says probably the prize paid his trip. I know that's what I was thinking. Yes. Like all of his winnings were, you know, renting a trailer and. It seems like a little <clears throat> bit more per pound needs to happen for this. The effort. <sighs> You know? Well, and what if he didn't win? That's the I thing. He didn't. Know. It wasn't like yeah, he knew he was going true. to win. Yeah, so, that's a good point. Uh, Michelle says, "Why are giant pumpkins always on their sides?" I would love to see one upright. Right. That's a good yeah. point. So I also have yes. a, a picture here of um, it being weighed. Oh my gosh! So I assume this is how uh, he got it in his truck. Some crane of some sort. I <laughs> I assumed Paul Bunyan. Uh, well, it's hoisted Minnesota, it up, you know. It's Minnesota, Paul I mean, Bunyan probably did Helen, the job. Helen, Christy, I guess. any ideas what happened up there? I mean, I can't. <clears throat> and, and I guess I also have questions of like, is the Midwest the ultimate pumpkin growing place? Obviously, I would guess no, too, I but I don't, know. I don't know. I mean, there's there's agriculture everywhere. Well, so. you know, the for those of you out are who just realized that you have a lifelong desire to grow the world's largest pumpkin, <laughs> go for the the record. Here's some tips. All right, some tips. Mm -hmm. um, tips, keys to growing giant pumpkins include superior seed lineage. Oh, is this like a breeding kind of thing? <laughs> treating with fertilizer every other day. Whoa. Wow, that's, that's a commitment. That is a commitment. Huh. Uh, constant moisture and burying the vine in the soil to promote brooding. Sweet. <laughs> there you go. And wow. I mean, this guy is well qualified, horticulture teacher. He's, what was the second thing you said in the tips? Uh, treating with fertilizer every okay. other day. Like, how many days has this thing been Just growing? don't do it every day. That's yeah, too much. Too much. Too much. But every other day, keep up on How it. How many days fine. was this? Did you mention that fact that like well, from it the was, seed process to the road trip? It said it was talking? planted in April. Okay. So that didn't That's take a long. legit amount of fertilizer. So you could, uh, you could, you know, do the math, 50 pounds a day. It says as much as 50 pounds okay. a day. So okay. figure how many times. But it was coronavirus. So you could probably count on about 50 pounds a day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, pumpkin was on lockdown, so that's probably what had it going. All right, I got I got one oh. more. This is my favorite one of the night here. Uh, oh boy! Iconic astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. You know them, right? Yes. You're, Can uh, I say something first, though? Your yes. dad said, "Let's carve it." <laughs> right. Well, I love it. Yeah, that's gonna be a big pie right there. Oh my gosh! Okay, go ahead. Uh, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong. You know them, mm -hmm. right? They were mm -hmm. walked on the moon. Allegedly, oh, <laughs> let's not they, start that debate tonight, they, please. They have been joined in the history books dun, 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 by a chicken nugget. That is all. <laughs> are you are you curious? Do you curious. want to know more about this story? I do. 
Well, let's take a little look here. This is a little chicken nugget afloat. Uh, this is what is believed to be the first ever chicken nugget sent into space, reaching heights of more than 110,000 feet above Earth. This is the best part. <laughs> That's about 880,000 nuggets high. Oh, eight, wait, how many? 880,000, almost Whoa. a million nuggets high. Wow, that's enough for all of our viewers on the show tonight. Yes, have at least a few. <laughs> what kind of sauce would you like with that pumpkin? A uh, team of experts in the field of stratospheric exploration created the perfect vessel for the nugget to travel in. It was sent into space using a meteorological weather balloon filled with hydrogen that's lighter than air to carry the tasty cargo up to the stratosphere. Tasty cargo. <laughs> using a custom designed launch vehicle, including primary avionics, auxiliary satellite tracking, and an integrated camera support system taking video footage, the lone nugget was sent up, up and away out of the Earth's atmosphere. The nugget was sent starbound from a location close to the head office of the UK supermarket chain called Iceland in North Wales. Andrew Stanilan, trading director of the grocery store, said 2020 is a huge year for us as we celebrate our 50th birthday and we wanted to find ways to mark the occasion just like anyone celebrating a birthday in lockdown. What better way to show that our products are out of this world than by sending one of our favorite customer favorites into space. Out of this world. Booyah! Chicken nugget in space. Right there. Oh, man. I... Yeah. That happens. I mean, so, come on. This who was the product of a virtual meeting, I brainstorm. Who <laughs> can say that good things haven't happened in this crisis? This <laughs> pandemic has brought forth saved grandmothers. Uh, extra large pumpkins and chicken nuggets in space. We are just the the level of innovation we are achieving. <laughs> no vaccine yet, but but but, but chicken, chicken nuggets, nuggets in space. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Priorities. That's all I gotta say. Winner, winner, chicken dinner is all I have uh, to say. Yeah. I mean, the, I think the part of that story that really gets me. I'd love to hear what everybody, what you guys are thinking right now, because my brain is like going a million miles an hour. The first thing I think of is this camera. Like, obviously, they are documenting this with a camera system, right? Mm -hmm. That's going Just all with the this way. This is up. a camera. Right. Let's took a picture. That yeah. picture is amazing. So, this grocery chain. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's like that took. Took some effort. I, I love like somehow the epicness of putting a chicken nugget in space seems too big for fifty. Like, what are they going to do when it's a hundred? I mean, <laughs> they don't have to worry it's about like it. Suddenly, it's, a whole new crew. it's like yeah, we're fifty. You know, it's like Let the grandkids figure that we, one out. <laughs> like this is our twenty fifth show, by the way. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I feel like we. We should have done something bigger. I think we should have, we should <laughs> have, put, we should have put a fry into space. We should have grew a pumpkin of some sort. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're disappointing you guys. We're this is a real letdown after all that. Brenda says that Jason needs to add a face to that McNugget, please. <laughs> Right. Uh, oh man. Michelle says because only McDonald's chicken nuggets could survive that trip. <laughs> and if you dropped it, it would bounce. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. uh, Linda, aka my dad Walt, says, Will it last longer in space? That is a good question. I wonder oh. if it's still edible when it gets down to the ground or if it just like burns up in the atmosphere. Is it like uh, yeah, that's a good flame question. broiled? Suddenly it'll it's a, land on someone's lawn. <laughs> it becomes a uh, Burger King nugget on its way down. <laughs> flame broiled. Uh, Amy Payne says, I have the theme from Pigs in yes, Space. Yes, Muppets. In space. I totally was thinking Muppets here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, I was so, right with you, Amy. Good stuff. Uh, good stuff. Where do you find these stories, by the way? I, I know a guy. Well, keep them. Are you guys having a killer time? <laughs> I hope so, because we're just getting started. And now, a word from our sponsors. All right, you guys. This it's getting good. close. It's getting close. He's been working pretty hard, I have to tell you. You'd be impressed. This is He's put a lot of thought into this. I'm a, I, Not me, but you. Well, you know, I want it to be good. And we, <laughs> we actually had a, uh, we had a good brainstorm the other day. So yeah. this, this, is, this is gallery night we're talking about, and it's going to happen... 
three weeks from now. Yeah, I'm do the math. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's a Wednesday night in November the 11th, and uh, we're gonna have it's we're going all out. We're gonna have the kids involved. Jenna's gonna be here. We've got some. We got a studio tour plan. We've got some surprises mm-hmm. plan. Um, but really, we want this to be an evening. It's like this show, but next level, right? We want it to be fun and funny and inspiring and hopeful. And we want it to be something that's a, a global event that you invite all your friends and families to be a part of. And uh, we, we're excited about it. In yes. fact, we just put together a little trailer. Uh, some of you may have already seen it, but uh, we wanted to show it. I guess technically it's not a premiere because it has been out for about 24 hours, yes. but I uh, wanted to show it to you to give you a little sneak peek of what is in store for gallery night. 2020 has been a unique year. Like everybody else, I was experiencing all the feels. Fortunately, I was able to retreat to art as a form of therapy. I was kind of surprised that the paintings that emerged from my studio were filled with light and optimism. They represented important concepts that I wanted to share, like the fact that this unprecedented moment in time has ushered in amazing opportunities, that there are so many things to be grateful for, and that light is stronger than darkness, and there is a reason for hope. I want to share these paintings with you and the stories behind them. You're invited to join us for Gallery Night, a special evening of art, storytelling, and inspiration. It's a virtual event, so you can join us for free from anywhere. We'll be kicking off an online auction where you'll have the opportunity to own one of these originals. I call them my Corona Blessings, or any of a number of exciting limited edition items. And if you watch live, you'll have a chance to win some amazing prizes. I hope you'll be able to join us, and perhaps even host a watch party with friends or family. We've had a rough year. We could all use a chance to laugh, a reason for hope, and a reminder that there's still good in the world. I have to tell you, we, you know, right now we would normally be planning our Wonder Night event, which is a, would be an in-person fancy gala type event um, on the Capitol, Capitol Square here in Madison. You know, like gowns. People wear gowns. Jason gets like cufflinks on and stuff. Yeah, I go all out in yes. a suit. Yeah. So we have a lot of energy to put towards this. And I think you're going to see it that night. I, there's a lot of love that will go into this event. So we don't want you to miss out. Of course, we want you to be here. But we also want you to spread the word and invite, you know, the possibility of a watch party, either virtually or with your crew on the couch at your house. And we kind of have some ideas of yeah, what that could be. We totally want to encourage you. As Something that you'd said recently was that <laughs> this year, time has no meaning. <laughs> like, I don't, you know, we've said that a lot. Like, I, I don't know what day so it is. I don't know what month it is. It's what's going funny. on. Right. But one of the things that we can do, and again, this is something we talked about a few weeks ago, is creating anticipation. And so a watch party is something that you can organize to to have something to look forward to. So I don't know if you noticed this or not, but this is the uh, week after the election. Um, and hopefully we'll have, that'll be all sorted out by then. But it's 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 been a very divisive time and we're all wary from the entire year. And so to have something fun and uplifting, it's like a little pep talk to look forward to. Mm-hmm. And we've already gotten word of people who are hosting different things. So some people are doing it virtually where they're just going to, you know, interact like you guys are doing uh, that are here live right now in the chat with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, some of you are planning to have some family over, some friends over. Um, I know my parents uh, informed us that they were going to have a, a couple over and have kind of a fancy dinner and then watch, dress up, dress up watch mm-hmm. the show afterwards from the living room couch. Um, we've had people that said they're going to, um, a- Amy on here, I think said she, they're going to be doing, and they're PJs, right? So you could go living room for mm-hmm. Chinese food or <laughs> a pizza, uh, PJ style. You could, uh, we've had people say that they're going to do uh, gourmet popcorn and specialty craft mm-hmm. sodas. And it's just, again, it's one of those things like put it on the calendar, have something to look forward to. And the goal with this is to make it with the same amount of love that we have for Wonder Night, where it's not just an art show. It's not just, oh, here's art that people can buy. 
It's about bringing inspiration and hope and humor to people that we all kind of need right now. So uh, and those of you who've been to one of our in-person events know that hosting events is kind of one of our, it's our jam. You know, we put a lot of um, creativity into and magic into it. So um, I can definitely guarantee that all those elements are going to be put into this in a very unique way. Um, and I, I think we're all ready for something different. So I hope you'll join us, spread the word, grab someone by the hand and say, hey, you know how I always tell you about this, this these people? You gotta tune in that night and maybe we can do it virtually or come over come over and we'll eat dessert first and yeah. and um, have mac and cheese on the fancy china, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Paul says, uh, glad we get to be there this year. And that's uh, one of the things we're most excited right? about is people who right. can't make it to Madison on some random yeah. Friday November night. evening. Yeah. So <laughs> this is open to everybody. Um, good point. So there's another good one. Uh, oh, Mary Beth says, I was already looking forward to it. The video makes it even more exciting. Ah, That's very cool, to cool hear. Mary Beth. Jody says, Want pictures? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. If you're planning yes. a watch party, you want pictures. We want to see what kind of fun you guys do. Mm -hmm. uh, is black tie optional? <laughs> it is optional. Yes, it is. Uh, recommended if you want to go in that, pants. that way. I mean, it's whatever direction you're taking, this is the right one for yeah. you. So, yeah. so awesome. uh, we're looking forward to that and uh, hope you guys will join us. Hope you will spread the word. Scapeitallhood.com slash gallery night is uh, a page we put together that gives you, has the video on it, talks about what it is. So, and there's some sharing buttons on there. So if you check out uh, that link, that's a good place to, uh, to get the lowdown and, and be able to share with people. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. So here's one of the things that is really cool for me is that it's always dawn somewhere in the world. It fascinates me. When someone is in the middle of the blackest night, someone half a world away is experiencing the joy of a new day. That's how life is. There's seasons of light, there's seasons of dark. I can hardly believe that just a little over a year ago, my family was on Lanakai Beach watching the sun rise over these two small islands known as the Mokes. I was booked to speak in Honolulu and this trip seems like an even greater blessing considering how this year has unfolded. Now, some days Kim got up to watch the sun rise while I stayed back as the kids slept. Some days we traded places and a few times we went together as a family. Every morning's show was unique, but it was always spectacular a living watercolor painting with a cavalcade of new colors seeping into the sky. The kids enjoyed scouring the beach for treasures that the sea brought forth during the night. I can't help but wonder now, after this slog marathon of a year, if I'll ever go back there with my family. And I, I don't mean necessarily that specific beach, but any beach far away from any fear wrought by a pandemic or civil unrest or divided nation. I wonder if a time will ever come when the future looks bright and hope isn't constantly being trampled underfoot. Will this dark night ever lift? But then I remember something about that week. We didn't have to tune into the television meteorologist to tell us if the sun would rise each day. We didn't have to wonder or cross our fingers and hope for the best. It just did, just like it always does. And we're also on the beach at night a few of the nights and when it was so dark that the ocean could only be heard, not seen. I didn't bother worrying that it might stay that way forever. The sun would most certainly rise again, in time. And yet, when we find ourselves in the middle of a dark and lonely season of life, it can feel like the sun will never shine again. But alas, it's always darkest just before dawn. Maybe you find yourself there right now. There's no reason to lose hope. You just need to hold on. Dawn is coming. It always does. Another thing to think, think about, uh, even though we had gotten up early, made it to the beach, had we been looking west, we would have missed the sunrise entirely. It still would have happened, but we wouldn't have seen it. Perhaps you've been missing some of the magic currently happening in your life because you're not looking in the right place. In some ways, this has been a dreadful year, but in others, it has exploded with new opportunity and unveiled some hidden blessings. So, yeah. I'm confident that although things see, bl seem bleak at the moment, this pandemic too shall pass. 
darkness will dissipate and we will see that we weren't really as divided as we thought we were. And we will be back on the beach to soak in the sun and bask in the blessings that arrived during the night. This painting is a reminder that in these dark nights of the soul, sometimes we need patience and sometimes we need a new perspective. Either way, dawn is coming. I love this message because I am just feeling a collective fatigue from a lot of the folks I'm talking to um, on our Wonder Whimsy calls. And I think we're all just so ready for dawn, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, who isn't? Right. Right? I have a theory that uh, at 2020, did I say this last week? I don't remember. No, I said, said it, said it before, but this week, 2021, yeah. I think we're, we are all will collectively like will 2021 to be awesome and we will never speak of this year again. <laughs> and I just feel like, I just feel like we're just going to collectively, I don't know if that's a thing that we can just will things to be better but i just think there's something this yeah. year about that turn of the calendar and that sort of metaphor for dawn right, right. is that sort of fresh beginning um we're uh, we usually geek out over new years we we tend to do a lot of reflection we have a retreat that we kind of do collectively um to try to transition our thinking and think new but this year i just feel like everybody is going to i feel like if we miss that you know, we're really missing out on an opportunity. Um, so I'm sure we'll be talking more about that as New Year's sneaks upon us, but it kind of gives us a little foretaste of the conversation right now as we look ahead to the light, yes. right? Yeah, Lisa says the sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Good I old. can hear her singing, right? right? <laughs> yes. Gretchen says, thanks, Jason. I always appreciate your message. Thank you. Cool. Um, Kelsey says, your messages are amazing. And now I will look east when the night mm -hmm. seems too long. Yes, please That's awesome. do. Very um, cool. So this is, uh, this is a good uh, lead in, I think, talking about the mokes. Yes. Um, and I'd love to know if anyone in the comments especially has have seen the mokes. Um, it's the windward side of Oahu. Uh, you drive through the big tunnels near, uh, you know, heading out of Honolulu. And uh, it's just such a beautiful area. It's pretty magical, which is why I wanted to incorporate that into our Let's Draw segment tonight. Okay, you guys, we're gonna have some fun tonight. We're gonna go, this is gonna be a little a challenge, I think. We're gonna go a little bit, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna call it detailed, but a little bit more skill, and you're gonna teach you a few things that'll, that you'll be able to use that'll be kind of fun. It's right? show number 25, they are ready. We gotta, we gotta pick it up a notch. Yeah. So this one I will, I, I usually say that you can use uh, anything to draw with, anything to draw on, pen and a post-it note. And you can do that for this one, but you're gonna, you're gonna need the full range of colors uh, to get the full Should effect on this one. Should we give him a second one. to go get some crayons? Uh, well, you can. It'll take a little while, but I, I think you can. This they'll be on replay, and you can watch this over sure. again. So, good point. Uh, what we're gonna start with here is uh, we're gonna start with the horizon line, and uh, this fancy thing lets me make a little. Uh, I love how that clicks so there. straight. Now, what I want to do is uh, I'm gonna we're gonna draw the mokes. We're gonna draw the mokes at dawn. Okay. Sweet. So this is going to be a little bit hard to explain, but it just it's they look a little bit like this, okay? So that's one of them. And of course, you don't have to be if you don't want to draw the mokes, you could just draw two little islands and that's fine too. <laughs> All right. So we've got two little guys here, and I'm going to draw of course Wow. The faces on them. Usually do that at the end. This is a different Rhythm, a little bit that? different here tonight. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So let's see. I can go in a couple different directions with this. What we're going to do here, I'm going to pull out my airbrush tool. And I don't often use this, but this is what tonight calls for. So we're going to, this could be good. You could do this with crayons, with, um, well, with a lot of different things. Use your, use your imagination. But what I'm going to do here first, so the goal is to create the feel of dawn, right? Mm -hmm. The feel like it's just about, the sun is just about to rise. Mm -hmm. 
So I have my background is purple and I'm going to take a little bit of a darker shade of purple and make sure this is bigger and bring the opacity down and the very top Ooh, that's cool. I'm going to add in a little bit of a purple shade like that. Hmm. Bring that down. All right, so that's pretty good. Now um, I'm going to at the bottom I'm going to take a lighter shade of purple Just a little bit like I'm gonna do this, and I don't know how big my thing is gonna be. I have to change it up. Okay, yeah, here we go. I'm just gonna kind of bring this in just a little bit lighter. Hmm. Okay, and now I'm gonna get like a uh, little bit of a reddish orangish color, and I'm gonna bring that in. So That's you're gonna get cool. this little almost like a it's like a pink, I guess, right? Okay. You know, as you do this, it kind of reminds me of sitting and watching a sunrise because it just changes every five right? seconds. Right? That's one of the things that's kind of cool about it. I know. I love that process and of seeing the light change. And I'm going to go with just another change. shade brighter with the orange. And I'm going to keep this kind of, kind of in the middle here. Okay. And then I'm going to get just like a little bit lighter and then I'm just going to do it in the middle. Okay. So you oh, get just cool. that coming up. All right. Now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to um, my regular brush, my little drawing tool, and I'm going to color in the mochs now. And I'm going to do this with the darker purple. I don't want to go black because I want to be able to see those faces mm -hmm. still. But I'm going to bring in a, it's going to be a little bit bigger. There we go. I'm going to bring in this so it's a silhouette, right? All right, now here's a kind of a fun, fun part. I'm going to work on these clouds, and this is these are the, this is a little part here I'm going to show you um, that that are just like little techniques to make things like pop. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to go back to my my airbrush real quick, and I'm not going to just need to see how big my thing was. All right, so I'm going to do some clouds. Now this is where the Bob Ross thing comes in, and it's going to be the a little bit of a darker, the same color as the the mochs, and it's a little bit too big than what I want. And I'm just going to make some clouds here, okay? Cool. And it can be any shapes, doesn't matter. I'm going to make some another little one here. It's a cool thing. These are these are happy little clouds. <laughs> they can take any shape that you want. But here's the part where it gets cool. So I'm going to get a little bit smaller brush and I'm going to go get that, that pink. And I'm now keep in mind the, um, the sun is coming up from the horizon. So the things on the underneath of the clouds are what's going to have the light. So I'm just going to trace, make that a little bit brighter, trace this bottom here Ooh, yeah. of the clouds. That's okay. cool. Just like that doesn't have to be perfect just give you that tracing in there mm -hmm. and then I'm going to go and I'm going to get a little bit more of the orange and the parts that are closer to the middle closer to where the sun is mm -hmm. are going to get that treatment and that's where you get a little bit of that glow right because it's like fades out over the rest mm -hmm. of the, the like, painting yeah and then I'm going to get more of this yellow and right on this edge here Got that. Now, That's cool. here's another cool thing. So then for the water, to make the water kind of look like water is real easy. It's very impressionistic. So I'm going to take the dark again, and I'm just going to draw little, almost like sprinkles. They kind of look like sprinkles, yeah. don't they, Kim? Yeah. And especially right under where the mochs are, because there's those are in shadow. They're casting mm -hmm. a shadow. Hmm. And these little lines make it look like the water is kind of rippling and moving, right? Yeah. And uh, th where the area is closest to the, the mochs is going to be the darkest. And then you're going to get kind of little tiny flecks the farther out you go hmm. as that shadow fades, fades out. That's and cool. now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to go in there and get that pink again. And then I'm going to put this in the middle. Oh, that's cool. And bring the little flecks wow. of light coming in here. I 
We just created so much depth right? all of a sudden. And you guys can do this. And like, like I said, you need a mm -hmm. you need color. You know, this could you could do this with marker. Uh, this really would work good with paint or of course anything a digital thing. Okay. And then again, I'm just gonna layer. Get me a little bit of that orange guy. And then I'm gonna add that in there. But I'm not going to go all the way down where I did the pink. I'm, it's going to be most intense, closest to the horizon, right? And then we'll get this yellow and punch this up closest. Tim Stampo McMillan says this is her favorite one so far. Yeah. Well, That's this cool. is it's a little it's bit more, um, yeah. more complicated in terms of steps. Mm -hmm. Um, but not hard. It's not hard. You you can do this. Right. Um, and then one last little uh, little thing I'll do here, just to make the faces stand out a little bit more, is I'm going to um, get a I'm gonna get this color, and then just underneath here, uh, if you can do these little shadow, shadow underneath, mm -hmm. it makes it look like the little eyes and mouth are kind of recessed, like the little uh, that they go in, and they stand out a little bit more. So you can imagine how much fun you could have really putting in the detail with clouds, adding more clouds, adding more color um, in the, the water and stuff. But this gives you a little a little, uh, little taste. And this is uh, what I'm calling the uh, mokes at dawn. Uh -huh. Which again, is a, one of those things like, who wants to draw the mokes at dawn? Hopefully you. Yeah. And uh, I can't wait to see I love the guys... comments coming in here. Kara first said, this is absolutely adorable. And then she said, I heart this. I love this. <laughs> Helen says it's beautiful. And she, Helen said something about chalk. This would, Ooh, be, a chalk really, would be really good. Right. Yes. All of a sudden, I'm like, wow, wouldn't, how beautiful would that be? Chalk, if your snow pastel. melts, Helen, you can find your driveway. And because last we heard, you had several inches. So <laughs> You know what else would work good is um, uh, colored pencil. If you get like, you can buy like, well, you could use construction paper or art paper that's purple mm. and then do colored pencils oh, over cool. the top. And I Texture love, it's back. one of my favorite things to do is to do colored pencil on a colored background. Mm -hmm. um, and you would real, really be able to get the, the shading and stuff like that there. So, um, by the way, little inside, you know, artist wife tip, if you're ever looking to do colored pencil for like a coloring book, adult coloring book, reach out to us because Jason got colored pencils for our kids and these are not your Crayola colored pencils. There are real colored pencils that just change the whole experience. So if that's ever something that calls out to you, just send us an email. Yeah, you know, that's you know. one of the things. If any of you, I, I have to point out, uh, Amy says, I now consider myself an artist. Aww. 25 weeks ago, I did not, thank you. And we that's do get awesome. a little snobby. Uh, we've talked about Rose Art. <laughs> versus Crayola crayons. And you know, that is something about the quality of materials you use yeah. that really just, maybe it's partly about like um, treating yourself, but the quality really does make a difference and makes your work better. Mm -hmm. um, you still have to know how to use it, but having like those p colored pencils you're talking about, which Gretchen is- wants to know what those are. Do they're you know? uh, Prismacolor, Prismacolor. Prisma. Okay. Um, they're a very popular uh, brand, but they're they're very buttery, yeah. and so they have softer leads, and so it's they they're different they're brighter, they blend better, things like you that. You get the satisfaction of a crayon, but you get the uh, the detail work of a color pencil because yeah. you can keep sharpening it. And I mentioned like purple construction paper, but if you were to actually get purple or lilac colored uh, drawing paper from like Canson. C A N S O N is a brand. Um, then it's it's just a it the texture of the paper grabs mm. the colored pencil better and it just creates a better experience. So yeah. uh, suddenly you work with some of these materials and you feel like oh my gosh like I'm, I, I'm amazing. Right, so, it, it changes the experience. Right, so. and so I yeah, encourage any that. of you that that enjoy these segments to uh, to play around. And um, I remember when I first started when I was a teenager and stuff it was a big deal to get you know, the box of colored pencils and yeah. save up for some of the art supplies. But if you if you have a chance to splurge. Maybe start making uh, your Christmas list, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good yeah. way to, uh, to pass the time. So thanks for playing along. I hope you guys had fun with that.
All right, speaking of fun, we've got some a sneak peek to share. Um, you got a little taste oh, yes. in the the, uh, the the trailer we showed about gallery night, but we're starting to get, not only will we have original paintings on sale, but our goal is to have a wide range of items at different price points so everyone can participate in Remember the Remember how auction. I said he's been working hard? Yeah, he's been designing and ordering all this stuff. So we have it in time to yes. be able to show you guys. So, so we're starting to show get you it. something. Yes. I know. Let's uh let Let's, me get this up. Okay. This and by the way, many of you already kind of know, but this is a photograph that I took that Jason made a painting out of. So this is a um, woven this is a freaking blanket. <laughs> and like let's get these like threads can you yes. get these threads in here so yeah. you can see like the, the colors. The colors. Are so whimsical. Yeah, can you kind of see? Oh, it's hard. Oh, the side oh, you can really tell. Yeah, just really hold. Let's leave it. Okay. Yeah. There yes. we go. So there's all these colored threads, and they somehow merge together to make this painting, which is based off of a photo that then I turned into a painting, and then we turned it into a blanket. So that is <laughs> that's how we roll. You gotta love uh, but there's one possible. one more blanket. Yeah, we so that is too? a woven blanket. Yes. But we also have a fleece blanket. Oh, it's so warm. I just want to cuddle That's with it. That's pretty huge. Chill. I know. Here we go. Okay. Is it even facing the right way? Let's see. Oh, got to get the lay out of here. All right. I'm going up. You ready? All right. Yep. Oh. oh geez. <laughs> ah. So there we go. It is the hope and the darkness <laughs> as a fleece blanket it's so soft and cuddly and oh my big. gosh and big that's, <laughs> it's very big this one almost like cover a queen size bed like um it would cover the whole bed it's definitely big um so, yeah, so yes i go. we've done um blankets the last <laughs> did few. you who <laughs> knew that you'd be standing on a chair for this show? by the way i do have donut leggings on tonight <laughs> so there you go um <laughs> um We've done blankets at the last few years in the auctions, and I, it's so neat to see people going crazy because we really usually only buy like one or two. Yeah, because this is kind I of I do a one woven and yeah. one fleece, and we don't carry these on our store. Like no. that's part of the fun of it. No, is I get to create things that we don't sell anywhere else. These are like yes. one off things. Um, last year. We did an umbrella. Yeah. Um, it's just it's just cool to come up, and we've got some other cool things that we'll show you when they arrive. But um, mm -hmm. I hope you'll you'll be a part of it. And this auction will start at gallery night, and it'll go for about a week. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah. we wanted to share that because we're excited. We're I've got oh notices that other things have shipped and they're on their way, but these are the first things that came. So Very super exciting. excited about that. All right, you guys, we got some great art. You guys are blowing me out of the water. This, we, the creativity the, and the slants that they've been the taking. The level you of guys, quality is, right? is, is, is going up. But um, Fritz Kalo, I mean, that is so, great. so cute, Kara. I love, I the, love, obviously, the reference to Frida Kalo, the great artist, mm -hmm. and the little flowers that are uh, right at the top. The rosy um, cheeks. And of course, the, the, the eyebrow that she's very well known for, so great. But not to be outdone is uh, her husband who chipped in here with uh, finger paints. If you yeah. remember, my uh, yeah. little pen wasn't working last week, so I had to use my right. finger to draw with. And uh, Paul said, you know, I'm going to go with finger paints myself. Which, and by the way, French fries are really cool with the finger impression. It almost looks like he did fingerprints, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I couldn't tell if that was like, it almost looks like a sponge kind of a thing. I don't know. I, I, uh, he'll have to tell yeah. us how he did that. But uh, literal finger we'll paints. have to have Paul on to give a demonstration and of this the technique. Par Parviz patate. Yeah, fr is the... French for potato, potato, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so how sweet is that? That was we great. Loved them, Paul. Yeah. That was so cool. Uh, Catherine continues to amaze us with her collage work. Uh, what was the? There's we, like a bingo card. That yeah, she used, she used for the this. thing as a as a bingo right? card. Is the is the container I and love it. Uh, the idea that there's kind of a, a little free prize inside there. Mm -hmm. Steven goes full on French, throws on the Eiffel Tower in there. I know, that was right? Next level. You know, right. back to Catherine's for a minute. She called it maca, maca's fret. Yeah. We looked that up, Catherine, because we're like, maca's, what is that? And a, 
I confirm this for us, but it sure seemed like maybe what you guys in New Zealand call McDonald's. So that's what we kind of picked up on from the Google. But um, the Google that is pretty new information. Pretty good. Yep. How cool is that? Uh, Paul is confirming that he did use sponge, I believe, for ah, those fries. So Stephen, again, great job on the Eiffel Tower. Mm -hmm. And then Kathy Rose went in a completely different direction. I love this. Uh, blue fries looking at me like <laughs> I know so I good I love that you just heard that song and then just made them blue I love that uh, so I love and again we're, we're getting more and more of these drawings and artwork so please keep them coming because yeah. it's so fun to see what you guys come up with uh, this week, I want to see. I want to see you guys go next mokes. level with these mokes. With these colors. I and, can't wait uh, to see what you guys do with the colors. This totally. Week. So we've got uh, Meme of the Week. <laughs> and with the Halloween heading in here, yep. this is how you officially ruin Halloween. <laughs> Hand out dull mini saddle salad fun size oh, and by the packet. way, a week later, they're recalled. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> the, the romaine lettuces. Uh, I... I wasn't sure if it was possible to top toothbrushes as the worst <laughs> Halloween trick or treat gift or candy salads. But, mm, it, it looks like fruit snacks, no, but it it's does. Not. Talk about it's, a disappointment. Even if there's ranch in there, it's still not good enough, right? Uh, my favorite part is whoever put this together, like the Photoshop job on this thing <laughs> is know. phenomenal. Um, and I want to, I actually want a pack just to have. Uh, because it, it's a brilliant, uh, brilliant idea. But do not do this. No. no. Uh, we got some some adult adultitis fighting to yes. uh, talk about. Rachel, though. <laughs> not only did she get to be outside in Michigan eating out, it must have been one of those warm nights that we had recently. But her and her um, girl that she was hanging out with got these amazing. Well, <laughs> you don't even know, right? You're like, I don't, I don't remember that part of the story. Whoever she was but... with, I don't know. You didn't mention that part. <laughs> Oh, um, got these amazing. Maybe it was a guy. Maybe it was a guy. I don't know, Who Rachel. Knows? You didn't share that part, but you can maybe share it was as Johnny much Duff. or as little maybe as you want. Maybe it was Tim Burton. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? These shakes were pumpkin pie and s'mores, you guys. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. This is legit. Yeah. You adult know what else I'm fighting. talking about? I think we should invent stories. Like we should just make. So like this <laughs> happened right after Rachel got hit by a car. Oh. Oh, and this is dark. bounced 30 <laughs> yards and was unhurt. Okay. Unhurt. All right. And she decided to celebrate by getting a vegan <laughs> pumpkin shake, which is what you do when yeah. you get hit by a car and go 30 yards or whatever. Yeah. Whatever she, told, she said. I don't remember what she said. <laughs> I may have the numbers wrong. I don't remember. But yeah, I think we should just, it's our show. We should just, we should make up the They stories? send in the stuff. Are you guys okay with we, that? We embellish. I kind of like that. We got to get the ratings up. We got to get the ratings <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. All Moving on. Alrighty. And then uh, Kelsey, Kelsey was trying to compete in the national pumpkin growing contest. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually 35 feet high. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. scale is kind of off. It's hard to tell. But yes. That's, that's uh, not a table. That's a floor. That little ant you see there is a man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Kelsey uh, was picking up pumpkins, and when she brought it home, she realized it was smiling at her. It's so a little, little grin, a little grin on I there. I love it. I love it. And then Helen, mm -hmm. I just ever since I saw this, I can't stop not seeing it in my dreams, and because this is not only did she she literally crocheted Wonder Marty a sweater. Have we shared that already? I, we've been celebrating. I don't it for know. Weeks. It can, I, don't know I need to have this up every here. episode. Right. Uh, Wonder and, Marty is the is the colorful Marty that uh, Wonder and Whimsy Society members get, and she made a freaking sweater mascot. for him. A sweater. She went and got fall colored yarn for this, by the way. I guess I did. Yes, she, yes, did. she did, and she made a little pumpkin for him because it's fall and he needs it, and he needed it. Ironically, that Wonder Marty is seventy five feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> to give you the scale, she's from Minnesota. That's scale. how they grow the pumpkins. Yeah. Didn't yeah. make it. The, the pumpkin didn't make it uh, all the way, but it was uh, it was up there. Uh, uh, Paul, back to Paul here with some yes. hijinks. So in the in the uh, mystery box that we sent out to Wonder and Whimsy Society members, one of the things we included we included tricks or treats. So the treats were some retro candy. 
And uh, then Bye. we... Uh, <laughs> Kim's out. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> Keep it professional. Oh, here we go. Yes, so we did. Yes, oh yes, we did. We did this. <laughs> just just like always. Just, you know, when you saw it, you needed to hear it as well. So, Paul... <laughs> I'm sure she fell for it. I mean, how could she not? Uh, other than the fact that she was probably taking that picture, but you know. <laughs> so yeah, little detail. Yeah. So this was the this was the trick in the uh, the uh, trick or treat box. But I love how you had to uh, pass gas and you were able to go get a whoopee cushion and then mask it right in that moment. Like that's hey, that's how life women just go. Lines up, you know. Uh, moving on. So Lynn's got a little story about the, yes. uh, the uh, Hawaiian shirt, the Aloha shirt, yes. as it's so, referred to. You know, if you're not a part of the Escape Adulthood League, by the way, every Friday we do a segment called High Five Friday, where we're celebrating the victories from against adultitis for the week. And so recently she put up that her son, Nolan, had always done in high school this Friday Hawaiian shirt day. Every Friday he wore a Hawaiian shirt. And she recently picked up a Hawaiian shirt herself and decided to start this up at work so mm. knowing we were doing the hawaiian theme tonight i'm like oh we gotta get that so she was good enough to send that over for us that picture yes it awesome. and if you're on if, if you're not in the escape at all hood league uh that's that's a free thing and it's a and that's where we have the high five fridays and whimsy wednesday and you go to escape at all hood dot me and sign up for that it's kind of our online community yeah. away from the negativity that we find on other social media last, platforms. Was it last week? And we were celebrating, um, I think it was Polly Merton had put, showed us a little Despicable Me minion mask. And I said, if you're not taking advantage of whimsical masks at this point, you're doing it what's wrong. going on? What's your, wrong. what's your story? So today on Whimsy <clears throat> Wednesday, we're calling out the whimsical masks. And I know Kara was trying to choose which one to put up because... <laughs> Hey. If, you, if you have to choose, you're doing it right. <laughs> right, exactly, right? And finally, this week, we have Carol, yes. who told us about the rock snake in her neighborhood. Yeah, that people someone have been had painting created. rocks. This has been a thing over the, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It's funny what things have become things, but painting mm -hmm. rocks has been a thing. But not only are they celebrating the you know idea of painting rocks, they're adding to this snake. So every day people add more rocks to it. And so when you go for your walks next to it, you can see how it's been added to. And of course, Wonder Marty is hanging out on the snake head <laughs> to admire all the awesome whimsical rocks. I so, love that. Just You just have to have one rock that kind of looks like a snake head, mm -hmm. paint a snake head, right? and then everything Gone. after that is fair game. It looks like right? a little pipe cleaner for the tongue. And off you go. Maybe add five to kind of get the idea, but then well, see what happens. Pretty right? rad, if right. I do say so myself. So mm -hmm. good job, Carol and neighborhood. <laughs> uh, well, we've got a we've got a giveaway. Uh, we want to um, give away the. Well, we'll tell them in a second, but let's oh. let's get the answer first. We got to okay. We got to do that first. The question. Right. Can I blow this up again? We got to. We really got to go again. <laughs> All right, so the question we have, we were talking about islands today, and uh, here's what I want to know. What fictional character would be the worst mm. to be stranded on, stranded with on a deserted island? So you're on a deserted island. You know, sometimes you're like, if I could just be with one other person, or if I could have three items, what would I... Right. Like, this is who, again, fictional character... Who would be the worst to be stranded with on a deserted island? Before you answer, Kim, let's show them what they can win. Yes. Yes. We, as you know, last week we were super excited to <gasps> Edward. Edward show you the release of the Celebrate Everything 2021 calendar. I mean, there's going to be so many reasons to celebrate when we turn that calendar, you guys. So this is going to help us do that. Give me a date, any date. Uh, October 7th. October 7th. If your birthday happens to be on October 7th, you will be celebrating bathtub day. So Sweet. get a bubble bath in Sweet. on your birthday. Sweet. Right? As I said. <laughs> so yes, this amazing calendar includes all of the Corona blessings. There's that art that was on the, the blanket we just held up. 
Um, and a few extra paintings this, as well. This one's in there. Oh, yeah. There yep, right there, Oops. February. Yep. So, uh, yeah, and uh, we have some really great deals. Um, if you buy one, they're 25 bucks, but if you buy two, it goes down to 20. If you buy five, it goes down to 15. Um, and if you buy as many as 20, you can get them for $10 off. And we've had people that are, someone just bought 50 of them to do a fundraising campaign yeah. where they can sell yeah. them you for double sell, their money. Yeah, sell them for 20 uh, and make cool. $10 off every calendar, which is awesome. We also had someone say, can I send, will you drop ship them all to my clients? I have 25 clients that I want to give them to as just an uplifting way to reconnect and make a good connection at this point of the year. Uh, uplift and so yeah so we're gonna drop ship all 25 to separate locations and um that's the kind you of can stuff. do for 20 or more right yes. you can't do it because another company fulfills them when right. they're smaller numbers but right yeah so, so lots uh, of creative ways people are getting it out there to celebrate everything now who, meanwhile what's your <clears throat> fictional character uh, by the way hmm <clears throat> Who would you just... Ernest from the oh, Ernest movies. Did I do that? Right. No, that was that's oh. Urkel. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Who's Ur What's his thing? Uh, I don't remember, but look, okay. I don't want to go there any longer than I have to. Uh, Wendy says Tasmanian oh, Devil. Oh, good one. Yeah. Dracula. Ooh, yeah. SpongeBob. <laughs> We got a pig pen in the house. Oh. Gilligan. Oh, that's a good one with the that's island. A good one. I like that. Uh, yeah. Count Olaf from Lemony Snicket. Ooh, good Ooh, one. Jenna Dolores Umbridge. Ooh. That would that would be a poor that would be a oh. poor stay on that island. Let me tell you. Uh, how, well, this might be Barney. Up there. Barney. Barney. Uh, uh, I the love Joker. You. you love me. Joker. Oh yeah, that'd be freaky. Mike says, "Well, he who mm, mm. he who shall not be named." Yes. Uh, the Grinch. Oh yeah. That's a yeah. Good one. Good one. Mm -hmm. Another Dracula. It's very, it's very Halloween yes. of you guys. Uh, what else? A uh, Jill. Fred Flintstone. Uh, Interesting choice. Not a fan. Uh, not a no, fan. No, not a fan of <laughs> Mr. Fred Flintstone. <laughs> well, there's, a story, there's a story there. <laughs> Kelsey says any clown. Oh, back to the clown conversation. This whole uh, month has been that. Teletubbies. Oh, yes. Yeah. That would be a disaster. They'll never Teletubbies. come back, right? They'll How about the tele you, the Teletubbies, Barney, and the Wiggles? Is that the oh, name? Oh, the Wiggles. The Wiggles. <laughs> it's, it's like have that as a nightmare tonight. You. <laughs> terrible. Terrible. <laughs> How about Caillou? Oh, that show, Christy, right? That was like the one show I said to the kids, like, nope, can't do it. Mm -mm. No Caillou. Uh, Amy says Candyman from that horror movie. Ooh, that, ooh, yeah. that, that one dark. Yeah. Zombie. Here we go. Yes. How about Pee Wee? Pee Wee. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> nope. Pee Wee. Couldn't do it. Steve. What are you doing behind that palm tree? <laughs> How about Elizabeth uh -huh. Swan? Ooh, who is that? That's uh, from Captain Jack, isn't it? What would oh, be yeah. bad with her? That would actually be all right. Okay. I would hate that. <laughs> so hate that. Yeah. Uh, Homer Simpson. My dad would actually oh, he would love that. appreciate that. Yeah, yes. but I'm with you, Wendy. No, thank you. I like this one. A Karen. Ah. Oh. Whatever, Karen. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that would be rough. That would be like with timely. Umbridge up there, right? <laughs> Hannibal Lecter, that would be unfortunate, Ooh. but at least he would be short-lived. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Mich Michelle Al uh, reminds us. Thank says, you yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Appreciate Can you do that. it, like, legit? I just did, and I'm not going to do it any better than that. Uh, uh, she also points, one of the Wiggles was hot. Well. Still had to listen to and, him. Uh, you know, we were we weren't parents then, so we're not really legit like savvy Wiggles. No, we didn't. It was we didn't have French. Wiggles. We didn't have Barney. We didn't have yeah. Teletubbies. We missed some. Caillou of that. snuck in. Yeah, PBS time. was still playing. Curious Caillou. George. I I was okay with Curious George. Stephen uh, clarifies Elizabeth Swan destroys the rum and burns uh, down the island. Plots. Still. <laughs> still. I. Mm. You'd forgive her for that? I'd be fine. I'd be okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. Yeah, baby. Yeah. She can have my rum. That's all I gotta say. Uh, there was one more I wanted to share that I thought was great. Oh, yeah. Mike weighs in with Jar Jar. Oh, Pinks. classic. Yes. Wow. I 
after some of these ideas, I'd have a hard time picking the top five, to be honest with you guys. Did a great job. Keep those coming in. We're going to we're gonna pick a winner right be, after the show. I but. would surprise my dad to say this, but I would say Chuck Norris. That's <laughs> been tanked. But if you had Chuck Norris, you'd be able to get off the That's island. That's true. My dad's a huge Chuck Norris fan. If there's anyone huge. who could get off a deserted island, it's Chuck Norris. That's <laughs> true. With pure will. I just don't know if I could handle his everything. So. Sounds like a nice guy. He does seem like a nice guy. But, I don't know. I think he'd be all right. <laughs> it's still... I don't know. All right, you guys. Well, uh, as we wind down the show, we want to make sure... This before the show's over. Let's, let's see. Does it work? <laughs> Doesn't get old. Doesn't get old. All right. Uh, okay. Before we get off, I uh, wanted to remind you about next week. Oh. Because not only we're hyping a gallery night, but Halloween show next week. You know we've got to do it's, something for Halloween. How did October at the end already? Where did this? How did this happen? That, that time has no meaning. Yeah, so we will be in costume. We will not tell you what costume, but it is going to be... I'm, be I'm, we've been planning. I'm committing to this one. Uh, to say he's committing is an understatement. I am he's making com- some... Can I say? No. No. It's a commitment. I'm going all in. He, you'll definitely be surprised. Let's say that. <sighs> I'm still a little nervous about it. You should be. I know. I, I don't know. Little... I think I'm more nervous than you are. I'm nervous that you're nervous. That makes me <laughs> more nervous. I'm like, have I made a terrible decision? You've already promised the kids. So I know. That's to. the thing I all right. promised my so, children. So this is a side conversation, but please join us. And, you know, if you want to be in costume, let send them over. I don't... How can they get us if they, I don't know how to do that. Like, how Well, do I'm going to say this. I will say this. Them? One of the things that I'm uh, planning to announce and will be in this week's Insider, which is why you're going to want to be a part of the Insider. If you're not already subscribed to be an Escape It All Hood Insider, go to escapeitallhood.com slash insider to subscribe. It's free. But this week I'm going to be announcing the return of the Halloween parade. So we have uh, like we done that in, in the past. We haven't done that in uh, a couple years, uh, but we used to have a Halloween parade where people would submit their mm-hmm. their costumes from the year, mm-hmm. and we'd have prizes. And we're going to do that again. So I'm going to have the details. Uh, remind me about that because I just decided that right now. It's been on my mind, but I forgot <laughs> that I need to actually tell people about it. So uh, yeah, so that'll be kind of a way that we can uh, mm-hmm. get people involved with that. But we're. We're going to decorate the set. We're going to do some fun stuff. So please tune in next week. Can we get a fog machine? Oh, we should. I know. Do we have the budget for that? No, because it'll probably mess up all the computer mm. stuff. But. Somebody somebody buy some calendars so we can <laughs> afford a fog machine. And then plastic to cover everything up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be pretty rad. Right? Yeah. We all have, right. We'll think about we'll it. We'll think about it. But all anyway, right. we have gone way over. <laughs> the people are, you're still with us. So thank you for that. Thank you for being here. Uh, keep in mind to look for the light. Um, that was something that, that that was a big insight for me as I was was thinking about this week's message was that idea of like, if you're looking west, you're not going to see the sunrise. And sometimes we just have to be looking in the right direction to see something that's going on right in front of us. So uh, please keep an eye out for the light this week um, as we prepare for next week's dark show. Uh, But uh, we appreciate you guys having, uh, you you guys being with us tonight. That is it for this show. Until next time, Adultitis Fighters. Shine on, spread whimsy, and be awesome.